So welcome back to my kitchen. Um, genuinely though, welcome back to my kitchen. Hi, it's me. Um, I, I'm gonna cook you something. And the reason I'm gonna cook you something is because this book, One Pot, Pan, Planet, um, is out in America. That to me is very exciting. So yeah, we're gonna cook a quick squash lasagna. We're gonna cook through it together now. Um, if you don't know about this book, it's kind of hopefully where delicious food, quick and easy cooking kind of meets, um, you know, sustainability in your kitchen and, and easy sustainable choices that you can make. Um, and yeah, I'm really proud of it. And I think the US edition has come out great. This lasagna is kind of an anti lasagna. It doesn't have any meat in it, obviously, because the whole book is vegan or vegetarian. You can choose your own route with the recipes. But also it doesn't require you to cook like five different sauces. I always feel like a lasagna is really, really complicated. You have to make a bechamel, you have to make a tomato sauce, and then it's all the layering and it just feels like a lot to do. But there's some really simple shortcuts here that make this lasagna something you can make in kind of 20 minutes on a Tuesday night. And that's what this book is all about. So to begin with, we are, we're gonna make basically the tomato, the tomato sauce that, that is kind of like the, the main event of this lasagna and it's not gonna be cooked at all. I originally got the idea from this recipe from my brilliant friend Heidi Swanson. Um, she does something with passata. This is this is a slightly different different version, but I thought it was so smart to just use the passata as the sauce. Um, so a bottle of passata. So <laughs> we start with a bottle of passata. Um, this one is 680 grams, um, and it's just going to go in to this bowl where the sauce is gonna happen. So no pans, no heating, nothing. Um, now I'm gonna add the equivalent of about a teaspoon of salt. So next we've got some lentils. These are cooked pui lentils. These are from a tin, but you could cook them at home um, yourself. You basically want two tins or 500 grams of cooked lentils. This is gonna kind of be the sort of body of your sauce. And then, we're gonna add a pinch of dried chili, which is gonna be a little bit of heat. I'm gonna add some capers. I've got kind of the bigger capers here, so I'm gonna chop them up a bit, but if you've got the really tiny ones, there's no need to chop them up, and we just need about two tablespoons worth. And, and what we're doing here with this sauce is basically just adding lots and lots and lots of kind of dimensions of flavour and texture. So the capers are gonna add a kind of acidic hit, which is gonna feel, you know, delicious against the kind of sweetness of the tomatoes. The, the lentils are adding some kind of creaminess and some body. And then I'm gonna also add some olives. So I'm using these unpitted black olives. I think once the pits come out of the olives, they just don't taste as good. So I'm just pitting them and kind of tearing them in. You could also use green olives here if you wanted to. Um, I like the kind of sort of umami that you get from the black ones. So we've got our olives in there. We've got our lovely capers in there, bringing acidity. We've got the chili, we've got the lentils. I'm gonna use some squash here. You could use kind of any root edge really. I'm just chopping it in half to make it a bit easier. To grate, I'm just using the kind of coarsest side of a regular box scraper. If you have a food processor, you can very easily do it on the coarse setting in there. What this is going to bring is just a little bit of freshness, a little bit of sweetness. But as I say, you could, as the seasons change, use kind of different vegetables here, some kind of sweated down greens, I wouldn't put them in raw because they'll release too much water, but if you, you know, cook down some greens or some spinach and then squeeze out the water, I wouldn't use anything starchy like a potato or a parsnip. Um, you know, you could even put kind of, in, you know, in the spring, you could put more kind of, you know, asparagus and those lovely green vegetables through it as well. Um, but if you're using a, a root veg, then obviously making sure you grate it 
So a fix in time is key. Um, right, so this is our squash, and all of this is gonna go into our bowl with the passata, with everything else. Favorite kitchen tool. Bread scraper, I mean the best, basically. You don't need one like this. I use this for baking, but a little plastic one. Just helps you move stuff around, clear up. Would highly recommend. I'm just gonna mix this up. So the zest of a lemon's going in as well. This is basically because I can't make recipes without lemons. It's a condition that I have. This is just gonna bring a bit of freshness, which I think is a really nice kind of, you know, surprise in a lasagna. It's kind of, you know, you expect it to be rich and unctuous, which it will be, but this lemon is just gonna give it a bit of, a bit of brightness. So mix that in. Just got two cloves of, um, yeah, I was gonna try and describe the garlic. Two cloves of sort of off-white garlic. You might have heard of it. It's quite a, quite a strange new ingredient that um, is sometimes used, used a lot in French cooking. Um, so I'm slicing the garlic quite thinly. You could also grate it, but if you are chopping it, chop it, slice it thinly, 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 thinly. If you can't slice it thinly, grate it because you don't want great big chunks of garlic through this. A chef I used to work with, the great Steve Pooley, um, he used to call this Goodfellas garlic from the scene in Goodfellas where he slices through the garlic with a razor blade. So this is, this is for you, Steve. Um, <laughs> sure you'll be thrilled. So in goes the garlic. So I'm gonna give this a taste. Obviously the squash isn't cooked, Mm. But I just want to taste it for salt and seasoning. I'm popping some black pepper in, and I'm actually going to go with a bit more, a bit more salt. Okay, so we're going to build the lasagna now. Sauce is ready, and the mozzarella. This mozzarella is going to basically be what stands in for kind of the creaminess, the bechamel. Um, we're using two four ounce balls of mozzarella. I've just got a bigger one, so I've cut it in half, um, but it's just a bit easier to kind of work out the layering um, if you do that. And I'm gonna cut one of the halves into thirds so we know what we're doing when we're layering it up. The whole book, every recipe has got vegan alternatives. And in this recipe, you know, you could just very easily use a vegan mozzarella here. So, this is my tray. You can just use like a regular kind of rectangular one if you want. I'm just gonna oil it a bit just so it kind of comes out um, easily. So I've greased that with the olive oil and I'm just actually gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to this sauce because we haven't cooked it. It hasn't had any kind of oil in the pan. So it's just gonna add a bit of richness to this. The base is just gonna be, first of all, I'm just gonna pop down about a quarter of the sauce, which I would say is probably about there. Then I'm gonna use a third of one of the mozzarella balls. So, and I'm just gonna rip that really roughly all over here. So that's gonna kind of go in and be really nice and creamy. And then I'm just gonna add a few basil leaves on here, just the big ones, um, just so this is kind of running through it as well. You can use whichever lasagna sheets you like. You could use whole grain, you could use egg, you could use, you know, just plain ones that don't have any egg and you could even use the fresh ones. We're talking about making this like quickly on a Tuesday night, no one wants to be blanching lasagna sheets. If you want to do that, you absolutely can. Um, and I will have unending respect for you. I've got a slightly awkwardly shaped pan here because it's an oval, um, so I'm just gonna break a couple off. And actually sometimes having a break in the sheets will actually help you when you're cutting it up as well. So that's one layer. We've got the sauce, we've got the mozzarella, we've got the basil, and we've got the pasta on top. And so we're just gonna go again, exactly the same. You just want to cover all the pasta so that it's gonna cook through. 
this is always this kind of nervous moment as you're building a lasagna and you're like, have I done the calculations right? Is this gonna add up? Am I gonna be left with like nothing to go on the top? Um, but you know what? It's your lasagna, guys. I mean, recipes are there to guide you, but also do what feels right. Trust your instincts. Because for me, any mistake I make in the kitchen is when I haven't trusted my instincts. Um, so I've got sauce, mozzarella, and we're gonna go basil and we're gonna go with our pasta sheets again. What you don't wanna do is have like loads and loads of overlap because if you've got, you know, a tiny bit of overlap is fine, but loads and loads of overlap, like, you know, thick sheets on top of each other will mean that they kind of stick together and they, you know, won't cook. I'm gonna to listen to my own instincts here. This dish I think is gonna be fine with just the two layers in. So I don't want a really kind of stingy sauce layer on top. And then on the top, we are gonna have one whole ball of mozzarella. And that's gonna kind of melt, become kind of the, the crispy, cheesy, melty topping that we all know so well from a lasagna. So there we go, we're gonna have some basil leaves on the top. If you don't have basil, other herbs work great here. Um, thyme would be really nice. Oregano would also be really nice. Even a bit of kind of finely chopped rosemary would be nice because this is going in the oven, so it's gonna feel it's gonna cook, and those hardy herbs, you know, will work. Obviously, this has taken me a bit longer because I'm chatting to you guys, but this is something you could really hand on heart throw together in like 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna finish off with a bit of salt. Um, mainly on the mozzarella because we've already salted the sauce. I'm gonna go with a bit of pepper. And then just a good drizzle of olive oil. That's just gonna help everything kind of come together. So if you live in America, this goes in at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If you live in somewhere that uses centigrade, 200 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until it's all golden and bubbly. It's really a kind of meal in itself because it's got the protein from the lentils, it's got some veg, it's got all the other pasta, it's got it's got all your food groups, guys. Um, but I always think with something like this, with any pasta, I want like a crunchy, bright salad. So I've just got a little salad there with some radicchio and a little vinaigrette. That's just vinegar, mustard, tiny bit of honey and olive oil and when I'm eating this kind of bit of lettuce I always put a bit of honey in my dressing because it needs it, it needs that kind of sweet offset. So here we go. It's not like one of those lasagnas when you're going to cut in and see really perfect layers. So I'm just going to dress the leaves with dressing. Da, 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 da. Good dressing music. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of olive oil on top. You could add some, a grating of Parmesan if you wanted to. If you're vegan, obviously a vegan Parmesan. I'm gonna add a little bit of kind of fresh basil. That's why I'm awkwardly gonna try it and tell you it's absolutely delicious because what else do you do at the end of a food video? So for something that we haven't cooked a sauce, we haven't really, really labored over. There is a lot of flavor going on here. Like the, the capers and the olives give some kind of acidity, some umami. You get that kind of butteriness from the cooked lentils and the olive oil. And then you get a kind of, you know, a freshness from the squash and a sweetness from the tomatoes. And then, you know, the creaminess of that mozzarella. So it's kind of all the things you want from a lasagna, but just kind of, made with shortcuts. So yeah, this is my quick squash lasagna, lasagna, and it's on page 240 of this book, One Pot Pan Planet, which is very excitingly out in the USA now.